This is Adam Roosevelt. I wanted to take the moment to just talk about today's geopolitical affairs. I will speak very candid, very directly, and give you a little bit about what I have been thinking about. As a former U.S. politician, as a former U.S. military combat veteran, and as an international entrepreneur, I think this message is not just for the American people, but the international community. There have been domestic issues. Let me start there with our border, and I think it's important that we focus on ensuring our homeland security is always our first priority so that we limit any of the issues that other nations may be facing with mass entry into the United States, illegal immigration, and we need to stand by our border security policies. We need to enforce our immigration policies. We need to reduce what I would think as open door policies. We need to ensure that our gates are closed, but there are forward-thinking leaders who understand that our immigration community is very important to the American people. We believe in skilled labor and trade. We believe in all of those things that help America be what America has always been, a global hub of so many cultures infused in one. We believe in that, and I think we have to make sure we balance our policy to protect the American people. Secondly, I think our issue right now with our foreign policy is a disastrous position for us. We've lost a lot of respect around the world. I think not only do we see that individually as Americans, depending on which side of the aisle, but also internationally with our position on Gaza and our position on Afghanistan, our position in Niger. We've got so many issues right now that have to be taken care of. And I would say, had I been involved in this political operation, I would have advised President Trump or President Biden that the goal now is really to strengthen our relationships in the Middle East talking with our partners in the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, pumping out strategic investments into NEOM or pumping out strategic investments into critical infrastructure with our most important partners. We've got to strengthen our relationship with OPEC and OPEC+. Plus. We've got to get inside the BRICS mind to talk about what America really needs, and we need trusted partners so we can protect food security, cybersecurity, global standing of our reputation, and build our ties back. I think we're sad to see how the reputation has been diminished over time, and it's time for us as American people to start putting the right people in office, to start talking about what the future of the United States truly is. And our biggest issue now is we don't have young leaders who are standing up and standing out. What I can say to my young colleagues who've been towing the line, whether you tow the line on the Republican side, whether you tow the line on the Democratic side, you know what, just be you, be genuine. Talk about what makes you unique, what you would bring to the table. I am a big supporter, by the way, of President Trump. I also think that there are new voices that may have different opinions, and I think those opinions are healthy. I was very disappointed to see so many exiting Republicans that are not gonna be staying in Congress, and I think this is a major issue to see how things are going on. I will say this in terms of foreign policy. America has to think about America first, and if it does not, America will be America last, and we can't continue to do that. And I will say it has been a pleasure and honor to have been a U.S. political nominee in one of the greatest states in the country, and I will say we are really one of the defense capitals. We've got Huntington Ingalls, and we've got Strong Navy, and we've got Special Forces, and we can win America's wars, but we can also use our State Department to win America's diplomacy action. I think that we have to take diplomatic affairs outside the box and start thinking with an Eastern mindset. I call on President Biden or President Trump to sit with the leaders of the United Arab Emirates and think about what they've been able to do. They've been able to create an ecosystem where Americans and Russians and Ukrainians and Iranians can all coexist in one location and their GDP continues to rise. They have the safest communities in the world and I want that for my people as well. Even from an innovation perspective, we are lagging behind. An education perspective, we are lagging behind. Our real estate infrastructure is not even that exciting. If you look at luxury and you live luxury and you go to the United States, it's unfortunate what's happening with our development and our architecture. We have to be on the front of all developments, the first to arrive on innovation, and we need to be more competitive. If we're not, we're going to continue to see what we're seeing today. America has lost its stage in terms of its presence. And our issue now is we want to maintain our reputation. And without these thoughts of domestic policy, without these thoughts of foreign policy, we're just going to continue to have issues. And I call on President Biden, President Trump to really take into deep consideration the next generation of leaders. It is time to start pointing out people, putting them in locations like Kansas, putting them in locations like South Dakota, uh, Virginia, and these different locations where we can start seeing a more diverse voice that is younger and that is also going to be the future of the country.
Now, I'll say this lastly to all the Americans who are watching. I have been proud of all of you for weathering the storm from COVID-19 to weathering the storm for all the war and efforts, to weathering the storm on the tax issues and the inflation, the economy taking hits. I'm so proud of our American people. You have no idea. I just want to say that thank you all for the strength that you give me. Thank you for the strength that you give the community. You all are truly a blessing to everyone around the world with your commitment, your resilience, your love for your community, your love for your country. And I look forward to seeing more patriotism pumped back into our country. And we'll be coming to a state near you soon uh, to support making sure America drives forward, making sure America is innovative, making sure America is heard and loud and protected and safe so we can have a model community that people look up to and leaders that people look up to on the global stage, on the local stage, and obviously even in our homes. This message is all for you, also for my daughter Amaya, also for my family. I'm very proud to be here, very proud to represent you all as well. And I'll just leave you with this. Stay forward, always fight for what's right, and always advance our issues as American citizens, no matter what the cost may be. We're willing to die for what we think, and we're willing to fight for what we believe in. But we believe in you and willing to do whatever it takes to give you a community that's safe. God bless America, God bless our allies, and God bless all of you. We'll be talking to you very soon. Thanks again for listening. All right, I got it out. Six minutes,